Lesson 8, Session 3, we are using division with remainders, so we have to use decimals. Number 1, look at the example. Suppose Fadil decides to use the dough to make 12 rolls instead of 18. How much should each roll weigh? So we're talking about weight here, and one mistake I could see people making is just taking the 12 and the 18 and trying to subtract those. Um, but it says look at the example. So I need to look up and see that the dill is making 18 rolls and the dough weighs 29.7 ounces to start with. But it says, well, okay, what if I use it to make 12 rolls instead of 18? So we really don't even need this 18. Um, we need 29.7 ounces divided by 12. So I know that 12 cannot go into 2. It can go into 29 two times, which is 24. I have 5 left over. I'm going to bring down my 7. I know that 12 can go into 57 four times. 9 left over. Last year in fifth grade, you would say the answer is 24 remainder 9, um, but no more. We are going to add a zero and continue working. Notice I did not add another decimal. There was already one in my number to start with, so I can add a zero and keep working. 12 goes into 97 times, which is 84, so I have 6 left over. I still can't stop here. I'm going to add a zero and continue working. And I know that 12 goes into 65 times. Now always double check your work because how much should each roll weigh? Would it make sense for a roll of dough to weigh 2,475 ounces? No, it would not, which means I forgot to place my decimal straight up in my answer. I have no decimals in my divisor. I only have one in my dividend, so it comes straight up into my answer. So 2.475 ounces. Number two, insert a decimal point in the number 3625 to show the correct quotient. If I'm taking 29 and dividing it by eight, I know by estimation that if I did um, 29 divided by eight, it would be about three-ish. So the only place it makes sense is to go in between the three and the six. There's no way if I took 29 things and put them into eight equal groups that it would be 36 or 362. So I know just by estimation that my decimal goes in between. Number three, a stack of 50 cards is 1.9 centimeters thick. All the cards in the stack have the same thickness. How thick is one card? Show your work. So I like to ask my students, how do we know which number goes inside the box and which goes outside? The larger number does not always go inside the box. So we really have to think about, am I splitting up the 50 cards or am I splitting up the thickness? So since it asks how thick is one card, I know that I'm taking the thickness of all the cards and I'm dividing that up. And it says I have 50 cards. I know that 50 cannot go into one. It also cannot go into 19. Now, because my decimal is going to be here, instead of using the X's as placeholders, it would probably look better if we used zeros. So because 50 cannot go into 19, I already need to add some zeros to help me out. Because I already have the decimal, I don't need to add another decimal, I can add a zero. 50 can go into 190 three times, which is 150. So I would have 40 left. I cannot just say remain to 40. I'm going to add a zero and keep working. And I know that 50 goes into 400 eight times exactly. So I know that the thickness of one card is 0.038 centimeters. Number four, find the quotient. 
of 9.43 divided by 82. I know that 82 cannot go into 9. It can go into 94 one time. So I would have 12 left over, bring down my 3. I know that 82 can go into 123 only one time. Which is 41 left. I can't say remainder 41, so I'm going to add a 0 and continue working. And 82 goes into 410 exactly 5 times. Now I forgot my decimal, so I'm going to bring that straight up in my answer. I don't have any decimals on the outside. I only have one on the inside, so it goes straight up in my answer. And I'm going to change my placeholder to a zero so that my answer looks better. 0 0.115. Number five, a school receives gifts of $600 and $800. The money is split equally, keywords, among the school's 16 clubs, how much money does each club receive? So each is also a keyword. The school receives two different gifts, $600 and $800, but they're splitting all of the money. So first we have to combine that and say that the school really received $1,400. Then we're splitting that between the 16 clubs. 16 cannot go into one, it cannot go into 14, but it can go into 140 eight times, which is 128. I would have 12 left over, bring down my zero. 16 can go into 127 times, which is 112. I would have eight left over. I can't just say remainder eight, so because I do not have decimals anywhere in my problem yet, I can add a decimal and a zero without changing the value of $1,400. If you just added a zero, now you're trying to say that the school received 14, well, wait. You would be saying that it received $14,000, which is a lot different than $1,400. So just be careful, make sure you add your decimal. And go ahead and bring down our next zero. If you want to go ahead and put your decimal in your answer, it might be a good idea. I know 16 can go into 85 times. So each club receives 87.5 does not look like money. So because we're talking about money, I would add one more zero on the end for our cents.